so how are you? I'm doing well. Uh, I was actually nice gardening um, right before right before this, though. So, okay, um, so it works out well for you. Yeah. Okay. How's gardening? Um. What it, do you have? Uh, so right now, um, I'm just like moving the soil. We got some new soil to like start planting some things. So I don't have too many things at the moment. I do have some uh, uh, cannabis plants. Ooh. So that's the ones that I wanted to get, you know, going. But mm -hmm. I do want to, you know, like my idea is to grow my own veggies and some fruits. So I need to go shopping for those. Um, no, yeah, and it's important because I heard that, um, you know, for sustainability, if anything, not that I heard, I know that if anything was to happen, you're good. <laughs> yeah, growing my own food is like the biggest wealth and knowledge that I could pass down to Violeta, you know. Um, That's for sure. Yes. So um, I wanted to to start with our intention for the for the podcast for today um and um you want to start what's your intention uh yes um my intention for today is to hopefully have the right words to share um with anyone that might be going in the artist path and you know, perhaps questioning themselves along the ways. And um, and I hope I find the words uh, to, you know, for, for someone to hear that we can make it, you know? And I think uh, having people that look like us, you know, having that representation is, is key. So my intention is to find these words uh, to share. That's fair. Um, my intention for today, I think that, um, this is, first of all, you're my first, you're my first, <laughs> you're, my first guest. <laughs> you're my first guest. And, um, again, I, for anyone who wants to listen, you know, and that if, if someone is listening that they can get something out of it. Yes, for today. Amen. So, um, I wanted to ask you, um, what, um, what, is, what makes you your highest self? When are you feeling your best? When, when are you that person? Definitely whenever I'm creating, um, I go into my most meditative state. I don't really sit down to meditate. That doesn't necessarily work for me. But while I'm creating, while making art, I always ask my ancestors to let them be the ones creating things. Um, and I'm just the vessel, I'm the, I'm the tool that is being guided by this highest power. and to be honest with you, like whenever I look at my art, I'm like, a lot of times I'm very surprised, like, holy shit, <laughs> did I make this? You know, it almost mm -hmm. feels like an out of body experience. Like I'm looking at this for the first time. Um, so while I'm making my art, that is when I, when I feel like I'm connecting to the highest power that I'm connecting to my higher self. Um, so yes. Yeah, totally relate. Um, and what is your astrological um, birth chart? Do you know it? Yeah, uh, I'm very much a Sagittarius. I have like Sagittarius mm -hmm. in like six different placements in my house. Um, so I'm a hardcore Sagittarius. Uh, mm -hmm. But I do have my Cancerous and Moon. Uh, so I think that's a, a good balance because, you yeah. know, my Sagittarius, Fire I could go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it's, um, there's some conflict in that, but at the mm. same time, I feel like it does balance me out. Mm -hmm. And uh, my school, I mean, my Venus is in Scorpio. Mm. So I'm very passionate. <laughs> mm. um, 
And like, you know, when I love, I love you know, hard people. and I love like Obsessive. very intense. Yes. <laughs> and and this is like, you know, with my art, like I love creating and I'm, not, mm -hmm. I'm obsessed with it. Like, mm -hmm. I don't know, you know, I go from zero to a hundred. Like, <laughs> yeah, I can see that. There's I can no, see that. there's Especially no great, size, right? Yeah. <laughs> Such a fire sign. Yeah. And a lot um, of fire. and adventurous. Mm -hmm. And um and then your moon. My moon isn't the moon. <laughs> you know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Because you know that's their uh cancer is a, a moon anyway. A moon? Yeah. Yeah. So you're like your moon is in the moon. Yeah, that's so I amazing. I think that's like my motherly sign. Um, yeah. I'm always like, you know, there's a gypsy, a nomad that it's always within me, but my mm -hmm. moon in cancer is like, all right, chill. You gotta put down roots. You know, mm -hmm. you need a, you need a nest. And especially mm -hmm. now with my daughter, with Violeta, I'm like, my moon mm -hmm. is like, I feel, I feel my moon a lot. That's good. That's a good balance. Actually. Yes. <laughs> I can see that. And your cultural background. Uh, so I was born and raised in El Salvador. Um, until I was 10 years old. Uh, my mom is from El Salvador and, you know, we were, we were ingrained to be like proud of our culture and heritage. Um, my father, he's from, he's from New York. His, uh, his background is, he's an uh, Ashkenazi Jew, uh, Polish and Ukrainian. But he went down to El Salvador, met my mom while they were doing community organizing. Um, and, and then I came. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> That's interesting. So growing up as um, a Latina, right? Um, South American. And then um, Jewish, right? Uh -huh. White, well, Jewish. Yeah. Well, that's his religion, but you know, Polish. You said Ukraine. Yeah, no, he's uh, he's more atheist. I think uh -huh. um, the religious is more like the ba you know his ancestral background. Uh, mm -hmm. He didn't really grow up religious, uh, which was a very funny dynamic with my mom being super Catholic. But um, yeah, yeah. I mean, to be honest with you, like growing up, I always thought my dad was salvadoran like for him yeah, it was like, like him. you know he was like super like sobby pride like he's he definitely instilled a lot of that like like proudness of being una salvadoreña um and you know I'm, I, I was definitely like way more um close to my mom's side of the family mm -hmm. you know i came older when to the United States, um, and then there was language barrier, so there wasn't that like um, family dynamic with his with his side, you know, except for a couple of cousins that were like sisters, but you know, um, mm -hmm. so it, it I I knew it was there, and you know, definitely um, I saw it growing up, but I almost felt like the other, you know, whenever I was like visiting the family, um, I was very aware that I was different. I felt like I was treated differently. Um, so mm -hmm. it wasn't the same dynamic. Mm -hmm. Well, it's good to know only because, um, if anyone or like our listeners, I'm sure that as immigrants or, or first generation of immigrant parents, we all can share that feeling of uh not not being part of a group or belonging more to one group than the other and sometimes even when you're more of one thing you i mean you identify with being one, more of one thing you still not accepted 100% on that side yeah. if it makes any sense yeah no i yeah. i mean i i definitely feel you know very close to my roots, but even like, you know, when I'm hanging out with my family, I'm so like, I'm so different. 
you know, even though right. I'm so like the closest to it, uh, you know, to my Salvadorian roots, like mm -hmm. it, they're still like not, I'm, I'm still an outsider. Although I'm like, ah, you know, I'm staying here, You're I'm inside, from here, yeah. like whatever. <laughs> but, you know, deep down inside, I'm like, okay, I know I'm different. And yeah. I've, I've accepted that finally, because before it was like, well, let me tone it down, you know, like, mm -hmm. but it's like, I am who I am. And I think that's the beauty about, you know, one's, like I was living in New York, I was like, wow, this, like that felt like one of my first real homes where I was allowed to like be myself, you know, I didn't feel mm -hmm. like an outsider in New York. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, I feel like New York also has that home feeling for me. Mm -hmm. And okay. So talk to me about your first about the workshop and how did it come about? and why you called it smoking pussies yeah uh, <laughs> so i um i started working for uh, i was doing a lot of hiv prevention work since i was 18 years old um first i started with uh i guess we could call it a church but it really was more of a community place that we would gather and um you know during mass uh while the priest was giving uh, el pan, like we would also have like a bowl of condoms and it was like, you know, like you're gonna do what you're gonna do. And if you're gonna do it, just like protect yourself. And, you know, that's where I first started doing my HIV prevention work, but focusing on uh, a healthy sexuality. And once I got into that, field I was like it was almost like taking this this blanket off me of like wait this is my body like I I take ownership of this like you know I can feel proud of it it was just like like what <laughs> uh also it's not learning what at the yeah. same time teaching and learning I was not aware that you know like the you know it was an owner like this this is my body um mm -hmm. it was you know when i was younger it was like like it was almost to fear you know fearing god fearing sexuality like don't be don't be a sinner don't be dirty don't be nasty like god forbid if i was like exploring and they caught me um so you know doing this work it was like it, it just empowered me and I was like, wow, like not having that power made like I put myself in in a lot of risky situations because I couldn't even say like, hey, can we wear a condom? Because what would they think about me if I asked mm -hmm. to wear a condom or like, you know, you might having, not like me. yeah, or having somebody, yeah. you know, like take advantage of my body and I didn't know how to say, hey, like this is making me uncomfortable, this. please mm -hmm. stop. Like I was not taught any of that. I was taught, mm -hmm. um, you know, to fear it rather than embracing it. And once I embraced it, it was like, this is my temple. You better, you know, like go wash your hands. If you're ever, you know, if you're gonna come close to it, you gotta, yeah. you know, I'm gonna protect it because I love it. And I saw it in this whole other light. Um, mm -hmm. And for me, that was extremely empowering. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, I started working a lot with the youth and being like, wow, if, if the youth could hear this message early on, like, you know, this is yours, like you can take ownership. This is your power. Um, things can start to change. And, um, so that's how I first started. Then I started working, um, at the Dominican Women's Development Center in Washington Heights. And I did a lot of work with the LGBT, uh, LGBTQ community. And, um, and then, you know, we would do like workshops on like our anatom anatomy, you know, like just different things. But I, I was like, if we're going to be doing workshops, like my, my biggest tool, my biggest healing tool is it's always been art. So I'm like, mm -hmm. the workshops that we're going to be giving, we're going to incorporate art to it. And that was how I first started um, incorporating art, um, 
you know, making the the smoking pussies, um, you know, because it's like you're you're seeing it while you're making it. Now we're talking about the different parts. Um, mm-hmm. Also, while you're making it, we're breaking the taboo of like, ooh, this is scary, you know, mm-hmm. like this talking is what are we it. doing? You know, it's yeah. like, oh, it's mm-hmm. you know, we're we're making art and we're mm-hmm. talking about it without any shame and. You know, and then like looking at it, it's like, oh, like you saw the participants getting like Mm -hmm. proud and it's Mm -hmm. like, um, so it wasn't like, it wasn't like a conversations that maybe would get people like close up. It was like, no, we're just like making art, we're chilling, we're talking. Mm -hmm. Um, There's no shame. There's no shame. And we should like. It's more like we're creating. Exactly. We're creating, we're making a sculpture. But you know uh, what? Making the smoking pussies, like I realized that um, that also puts you in a position where you start asking yourself questions like, um, when was the last time I saw myself? Um, and what is it that, let me see, what, what is it, what is that view like? Mm-hmm. Um, and also, because in order for you to put it in into a creation, to make it into a clay, um, into our sculpture, you kind of had to have a mental picture of it. Mm-hmm. And there's a lot of women and men that haven't, um, well, men in the sense that they see their organ because it's right there. Um, but men that have really stopped and contemplated it in an artful way. Um, and also for women, especially Latinas, I find that um, or black and brown people, I find that because of religion or the way that we brought up, um, we we haven't taken the time because we, we grew up thinking that, um, you know, you can't touch it. You, you can't see it. But if somebody wants it, um, they can have it. Um, but it's a secret. And um, it's all like a secret. Like it's a secret that you're looking at it. It's a secret if someone is touching it the 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 way that you don't think it's supposed to be. Um, you don't say anything, and especially if it's without consent. Um, you know, as someone that survives um, sexually sexual abuse or whatever, um, it's not open to mm-hmm. have this conversation. Mm-hmm. So. Um, having these workshops, it, it makes you tap in into all of that. Um, from your experience, have you um, seen any breakthroughs with any of the women that are in, in the workshop? Yeah, I mean, one of like the, the biggest breakthroughs that I would see was um, the older women that, you know, their whole lives, it was just like, like, you got to feel ashamed of it. You have to feel guilty if there's pleasure, you know, and, and just like for the first time they were able to openly talk about like, Hey, sometimes like, you know, I like to touch myself. And that was just like the biggest, like, Oh my God, how, Mm -hmm. you know, like even saying it, but I was like, if you can start, having these conversations and being more open about it and realizing that this is all part of nature and life and it's beautiful and it's sacred, then the conversations that we're going to be having with our children, with the younger generation is going to be a lot different than what I had been taught, what they had been taught. And, you know, and that's how we could really start to change, um, you know, by, by having these conversations. So for me, um, you know, I, I worked with like young, younger people with, uh, older people, but it was like, for me, like the, you know, the older women that were able to open up for the first time and just like, mm-hmm. and get like, in touch, in touch with their younger self. Yeah. That just must like, be amazing. You know, <laughs> and to be like, this is a gift from God, from the universe, mm-hmm. from life, like, Mm-hmm. we need to we need to embrace it and love it and and mm-hmm. and take care of it um and a lot of the times it was like wait i had i never heard about this before like i never thought about it 
in this way and you know and having them open up was just like Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, it, it was nice because, um, you know, because, again, like, I went through a lot of um, trauma and a, a lot of, um, I put myself in a lot of situations that because I didn't know my power, I didn't, I didn't own it, like, it just... Yeah, it just put me in in very dangerous circumstances. And for me, it was mm-hmm. just like we need to change the script. We need to change the way the way we talk talk about it, the way we view it. Um, so that's why for me, it it was a very important um, work that that I was doing. And again, you know, incorporating art, it's the biggest tool the big biggest learning tool teaching tool healing tool so any way i could i'm like yeah let me push for art and as a matter of fact that talking about you know looking at ourselves before doing the yoni sculpture because every week we would do a different uh workshop we would paint and decorate a mirror so the week prior to doing the smoking pussy Mm. um incense holder they would do um, a mirror, which then they would take home, look at themselves, and then the week after they will come and do the That's a good, the sculpture. A good segue. Yeah. Because <laughs> um, when I went to the workshop, we, um, we, we just, you know, worked with the clay um, as a medium. Mm-hmm. Um, why did you choose clay? Uh, clay for me, it, it represents, you know, something that comes from mother nature, you know, it's, Mm -hmm. it's natural Mm -hmm. and, and the warmth that it carries, um, the way that you can mold it, sometimes it folds almost like skin, you know, it almost looks like skin, um, Mm -hmm. Clay is very purifying. So a lot of the components, I felt like it went very well with when we're talking about our um, vulvas, our vaginas, our yonis, pussies. Um, so I was like, it, you know, just like we don't see anything wrong with clay. Clay is part of nature. Mm-hmm. It's, you know, like, However you mold it, that's what it'll turn out to. Um, just like that, we're part of nature. Like whichever way we're molding it, the how we're molding those thoughts, those feelings, um, that's what we're going to get. Mm-hmm. And yeah, clay for me is very therapeutic and very healing. So I thought it made sense to use It makes clay. sense. It makes sense. And um so smoking pussies why smoking pussies just so you know um there's i i thought it was dope because <laughs> i'm urban you know raised in in new york city uptown and um i live in the suburbs now but uh you know you, it's always who i am right so when I saw smoking pussies, I can totally relate to that. And I'm not uncomfortable by it. It's more like, oh, I can do this. Um, that's me, right? But for other communities, you know, that don't call it pussy, that will call it yoni, that will call it, I don't know, cookie and uh, kuka, <laughs> all that, right? Like, why smoking pussies? Um, so I wanted this to be open to, to the community. You know, I worked in Washington Heights uptown. So I was like, I could only, you know, do these workshops by being myself. Um, Mm -hmm. you know, we, we do have the, the proper words, you know, like the medical ways, oh, but that's not how we're going to talk to each other. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I was like, 
I want it to be a safe space where we could be ourselves. And, mm -hmm. you know, like, you know, I, I'm not here to like lecture anyone. And yeah, no, Professor this is like, Hoffman. no, we're <laughs> here to be real. We're mm -hmm. here to like get down to business. Mm -hmm. uh, there is no, mm -hmm. you know, we're done with faking shit. <laughs> yeah, we're here yeah. to like feel it out and mm -hmm. just like, um, yeah. So it just like, I wanted something to be real. Yeah, it's uh, really organic. I, it really is. Yeah, and I was like, I, I, I want you to know when you come in here that this is about being ourselves, you know. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not here as a doctor. I'm mm -hmm. not here as a spiritual leader. I'm here as a community member. Uh, mm -hmm. I know this has helped me a lot in my life. Uh, so I want to share these tools for anyone that maybe might have gone through the same or similar experience that I went through. So mm -hmm. yeah, it was about being real and just getting the community to know that, you know, what we came to do. Yeah. <laughs> we're not about that bullshit of, no. <laughs> yeah. Tell us a little bit since, um, we're talking and some of the audience have not seen, um, can you describe a little bit of these? Because I know that, um, we're going to go to your Instagram and we're going to go to your website and you're going to tell us all of that, um, where to go to find these. And especially if you're going to have a workshop coming up and I know that you're in California right now, but sometimes you come to New York city. Um, so, you know, and you can share all that, but visually, can you paint, paint a picture? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, <laughs> you know, the, um, the, the way that I've been doing these, like every time I make one of these, like mm -hmm. I literally make love to them, you know, mm -hmm. like I start by first when I get the clay, um, I start playing around with my, with my hands and between my hands and as I'm doing that, as I'm playing with it, I'm letting go of whatever stressors, whatever anxious thoughts I might be having and being mindful and almost visualizing that negative energy, like coming through my hands and being pulled by the clay, you know, for that to stay there. And that's how I started. And then from there, you know, I, I caress it. I, I play with it. I use a lot of times if it's for me, my own saliva to like finger it through. Um, and because the clay is earthly you know, anyway, and it, you can put it in your mouth. So it's, yeah. Fun. And it's yeah, toxic. and not just, um, exactly. Like you get nature. Um, like I'm, I feel comfortable doing this and it, in the same way, when I'm giving these workshops, I'm also telling a lot of the women, we should also be tasting ourselves, you know, um, just like how we should be looking at ourselves to know what's our normal, how our normal looks. Um, let's, let's smell ourselves. Let's taste ourselves. Right. Um, just so we know, you know, we, we allow our partners to smell us, to taste us, but are we doing that to ourselves too? Right. Are we making sure that, okay, this, this smell is good. Like knowing, like maybe your smell changes at some point in the month, all of these things, you know? So, mm -hmm. uh, those things that, you know, that I want, for example, a lover to do to me, I do it while I'm creating my, my incense holder. So it is a mm -hmm. very like sensual and erotic, but at the same time, it's looking at, looking at it face to face and not feeling like grossed out by it or weird about it. It's like, no, like you're a work of art, you're beautiful. And, mm -hmm. you know, and I'm, I'm giving that, um, as, as I'm, I'm making, um, these instance holders. And I like that, um, in the workshop, you, you, you opened up a box full of, um, crystals 
and um, everyone, whichever crystal we gravitated to, we pick one, and then we add it onto our pussy um, and the clay. Um, talk to me about that that part. Yeah. Um, so I've always been very attracted to stones. Um, you know, and I'm not talking just gems. Like I literally would go to like to different places and like I would always like grab a stone as like, you know, like I always felt very ener energetically pulled to to things from earth. Um I think once I started exploring my spiritual side more, my spirituality, um, one of the ways that I was able to connect with, with the higher power, with the higher force was through stones, with crystals, with gems. Um, I could feel their energy. Um, I did, I practiced Reiki, uh, years ago so energy i'm very sensitive to energy in my hands especially so crystals was something that i felt that allowed me to connect more with that spiritual side so for me it made sense to to add them to the to the incense holder because it is a spiritual you know it, it it is part of our spirituality. You know, our sexuality mm -hmm. is part of our spirituality for me. Mm -hmm. um, so, and there's a lot of healing. There's a lot of power. There's a lot of mm -hmm. cleansing to do. Uh, so working with the crystals while working with that, you know, making a, a, pu a pussy sculpture, it just, it made sense to me. Yeah. Totally. And um, so Anna Maria, we call you Annie. <laughs> um, can you tell us um, your Instagram handle? Yes. Uh, so my Instagram is Cure X Tribe. Cure, uh, C-U-R-E-X, and then Tribe, T-R-I-B-E. Cure okay, X Tribe. And, cool. And do you have a website? Yes, uh, it's www.curextribe.com. Perfect. And um, when is your next workshop? Uh, so right now, the, the workshop that I'm planning is going to be, because I know we might be going to some sort of lockdown or something, you know, winter is coming. Soon. So yeah. I'm in California. Most of my community is back in New York, so um, I'm going to be doing a Zoom workshop. And Makes whoever uh, wants to sign up, I'll be sending the materials. And um, that's, that's going to be probably around November. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm planning uh, to do Ooh, this. But it's going to be so much fun, girl, because it could be worldwide. And not only that, but on my gram, on my story, when I post my, my pussy, um, my smoking pussy incense holder, I get so many, uh, where did you get that? Um, who is that? What's going on? And I'm yeah. like, I have to tell them like, it's this and it's that, um, you'll find out soon. I'm going to have on my, on my podcast. And um, you're going to have a lot of traffic with that. No, and <laughs> I feel are. like, you know, um, I'm, like, I love connecting with people, but, mm -hmm. you know, these days it's a little bit more complicated. So I'm like, oh, mm -hmm. hello. I forget mm -hmm. about technology sometimes because, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, I'm still working to, like, be more technolo technological, you know. Savvy, it, right? Savvy, Me too. Yeah. I'm, like, so into people. And um, so so touchy touchy as a Latina, uh -huh. you know, like uh -huh. workshops and like being present yeah. in the yeah. in the moment that I have to I have to get with the times, like you know, especially with the Zoom and and interviewing and um, even classes online. It's like why why can't I just go and sit there? I'm so. Uh -huh. I, you know, habit is a creature, like a creature of habit. Yeah, yeah. But we have no, to I move forward. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. 
So, um, so you live in Cali, you used to live in New York city. Um, what, what propelled you to stay in Cali? Um, as much as I love New York and I feel very much at home in New York, um, uh, the, the high energy at all times, uh, not being, not having access to nature the way that I need it. And me getting winter blues, having to prepare to like, okay, I know I'm going to go through like this mm -hmm. depression right now. Mm -hmm. Every single year it Seasonal. starts to take a mm -hmm. toll on you. And even though I love New York, I feel at home. That's where my community is. I was like, I need to take care of my mental health right now. You know, especially sure. with the pandemic, um, having Violeta, I'm like, I'm just going to do what I need to do to make sure that I'm okay. I'm at peace because mm -hmm. if I'm not doing okay, Violeta's not going to be doing okay. Mm -hmm. You know, shit is just going to not be okay. So mm -hmm. let me take care of my mental health, um, mm -hmm. of my spirituality and, you know, let me not let me not fight like mm -hmm. you know like have this like struggle every single day no i want to relax i want to i want peace like that's what right. i'm at right now yeah. and that's great because um it you have to be it takes a lot of courage for that um to to take ownership over that not let it control you but at the same time no acknowledge this is this is what's going on this is how i feel um, that in the winter time, my mood changes, um, and then not feel ashamed about it and then doing something about it, mm -hmm. um, instead of living with it and then causing other people trauma I um, know. over it. Right. Mm -hmm. So, but it's something that we have to come to terms with. So it's, like I said, it takes a lot of courage because it's so much easier not to lean on that and say, you know what? And just stay comfortable because moving is hard. Moving is hard. And I'm then like, moving so to like, another state. Yeah. I'm still recuper recuperating. Like that, that shit took a toll. Like it's right. It's that's hard. a lot. Yeah. It's nice but... to go on vacation. You think it's okay. And then you stay, but moving. Hmm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. No, that I takes feel you. cojones. Oh, yes. No. And I, you know, to be honest with you, I feel like life was just leading me to come here because after, mm -hmm. you know, once the pandemic hit, I was like, okay, we can't stay in this New York apartment. I'm not getting any sunlight. So we had to like minimize our stuff because we moved out to the country in Massachusetts for the summertime. So then after that, we're like, okay, we're kind of traveling pretty light now. Mm -hmm. And that's what allow us to be like, oh, I guess we could go across country because we kind of already took care of like a lot of the bulk stuff. Um, so it, life had been preparing me mm -hmm. to like travel. For you this know? moment. Yeah. That's good. Okay, yes. love. So um, I'm super happy to have you today and I'm happy that we're doing this again. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, I wish I could be there because I, I'm, I I'm very much like, Chachi I love Chachi. interacting with people, and, but. Oh my goodness. But you're this, here this though. Yes, you're here. Yes. And the I other day it. when you bought that on me, I was like, no, no, it's fine. Like, I, <laughs> I want you to call me like that. Like, um, uh, it's not a mistake. It's great. Uh, yeah, um, I, know. I was like, my, my, it was like a booty call. A <laughs> literally, booty my, call. my, yeah, my butt literally. was calling you, but I was like, <laughs> you know, I needed to hear your voice right yeah, now. I was yeah. like that. Likewise. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, I'm happy that you're my first oh, and yes. I'm happy to have you here and that we're, that our first conversation is about, um, you know, how we came about, you know, um, through creation, um, mm -hmm. through our wombs and our yoni, our pussies. And that we're starting out this podcast with that. Um, thank you so much. Yeah, thank, thank you for you. your time. This because I know that honor. it's different over there. It's a different time. <laughs> and um, we went through this also. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and I'm just happy. I'm really yeah. happy. 
No, I really um, appreciate you for, you know, trusting me with your first time. Like, it just feels very natural with you. Um, I always feel a little weird when it comes to, like, talking and using my voice. But with you, it just feels like, all right, you know, you're my girl. We're just having conversations. We're just good. Chilling. We're just in the living room on the floor, yeah. chilling. Exactly. Smoking yes. and um, having a glass of wine and just creating. Yeah, and maybe when I you come to you. California, you can oh, my God, my yes. buds here. And... Oh, my God, yes, yes. Um, oh, well, yeah, because you, you're you growing, too. I'm growing. I have, you know, an extra room with, a, you know, with a place to sleep. So we got a home here. Oh, thank you. I'm yeah, going to take yeah. you up for that. I really yeah, am. Please, yes, <laughs> yeah, please Blue, do. are you listening? <laughs> <laughs> no, come, come over whenever you want. We okay, have a home man. here. So I love you. You take care of yourself. Besos a Violeta. And Gracias. Um, may the universe love you today and always. And I'll talk to you soon. Que así sea. Igualmente, Reina. Love Bye. you. Bye. Bye.